Okay, so now that we have stitched the die line for the short sods, that's what this is. That one for the short sods, um, you can use all felt to make your suitcase, um, and you wouldn't have to do what I'm about to show you. But um, I want to have a, a cotton print on the inside of my suitcase and a felt on the outside of my suitcase. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these combined shapes to cut a piece of steam -a seam And what this is, is it's a sheet of fusible glue, a very thin layer of glue, and it's sandwiched between two pieces of paper. So I just took one of these sheets and I and it has a grid on it, so I just laid it out and figured out, I cut it about a half inch bigger than this combined die line, and I cut out this shape, and then so I have this now. So as you can see, it's about, eh, it might be an inch bigger all the way around about like that, three quarters of an inch bigger. So it's big enough to cover both these die lines. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this fusible to cut a piece of, um, two pieces of fabric that I can sandwich this steam -a seam with. So it's gonna be like this, piece of fabric, the glue, and then another piece of fabric. I didn't want to use another piece of blue because it's not going to be seen. I could possibly see the print from the other side because it's a light colored fabric. So I chose something light colored. Um, you could even use just like a um, broadcloth or whatever, something cheap on the back side and then your pretty fabric on the front side to save on yardage. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, make this fabric. Um, fray proof so it won't fray so that's what we're going to do now so we got a piece of fabric a piece of fabric both of these are right side out so this is the wrong side and that's the wrong side and then we have our fusible piece of steam -a seam that we're going to iron all of this together so we're going to do here is we're just going to move this and I always use a piece of cotton fleece to do my ironing on. Okay. And then I also cover something with fleece so I don't burn my fabric. I have an old iron and it leaves marks. Okay, so I'm going to lay this piece of fabric down and then I'm going to peel off one piece of paper. There's two pieces with the glue in between, so I'm just going to peel off one and I'm going to apply it to my fabric like so and then I'm going to press it, get all the wrinkles out just by hand. So, just like that. So once I have all the 
wrinkles ironed out, what I like to do is take one corner and just like really adhere the glue until the paper starts peeling. So now what I'm doing is I'm removing the other piece of paper to expose the glue. I'm just gonna peel this back and then I'm gonna take my pretty fabric that I like and I'm just going to place it over and smooth it with my hands just to get any of the big wrinkles out and I'm terrible at ironing my fabrics that I use for crafts so um, this will get this fabric nice looking so what we have is a piece of fabric a piece of fabric and glue in between okay all that's left is to iron this and fuse the fabric together. So I'm just going to place this over. I already have my iron ready. So I'm just going to press and get this nice and hot. I'm using the max heat setting on my iron. Actually, no, I'm using a three. I could probably bump that up. You can use the max heat setting, but no steam. You don't want to use any steam, I don't think. It is called steam a -seam. Steam iron. Hmm. I'm not sure. I guess possibly you could use the steam setting. It says to set your iron for the temperature that for the type of fabric you are using. So, whatever fabric you're using, you want to use the iron setting for that. Since I'm using cotton, I'm using a higher heat setting. If you were using acrylic felt, well, you shouldn't. You shouldn't have to use the steam and seam on anything but cotton fabrics. Anything that ravels. Okay, so that should be pretty warm. And what that does is the heat melts that glue layer and makes this fabric so it doesn't fray. I'm just gonna go over that one more time just to make sure. I do see some wrinkles still. And I'm going to be doing this for the reverse side of every piece of the suitcase that I'm going to make. You can um, skip this step and always use just fleece or something that doesn't um, ravel. Okay, so that should be... I'm just going to let that cool for a minute. Okay, so now that we have that... I'm going to use this to cut a piece of the fleece or the uh, felt I'm going to be using for the outside of the suitcase. That's going to go on the top. This is going to go on the reverse. So I'm just going to use this as a template so there's no waste. So that's what our suitcase is going to look like. This will be the outside and this will be the inside. Now in addition to having a piece of fleece cut, we're also going to need our little pieces of um, interfacing like this. We're going to be using that inside the die line to add some stability to our suitcase so it's not so floppy. So these pieces are going to lay like so. Alright? Just like that. Inside the die line.
And we'll probably tape those down so they don't move. So let's go ahead and do that. You can, you can glue this on the reverse side or tape it to the reverse side if you want. I'm just gonna go ahead and tape it to the front. And so now we're just gonna cover this with the piece of fleece. Like this. Make sure that that is, everything's covered just right. And we'll tape this down too. One of the benefits of using water sealable stabilizer in the hoop is that scotch tape sticks to it very well. Okay. So now I'm just going to add this to the reverse side. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and stitch the final tack down to make the sides of our suitcase. why I don't know if you can see over here see how the line came down like this this is why when we cut the stabilizer out of the pellon we didn't make it this shape we made it a rectangle to fit just in this part because we're actually going to turn this this is going to sew into something else or glue into something else later so we don't want any of this thick stuff here because we need it to be pliable so it's much easier to have, the fabric will now naturally bend on this stitching line versus if we just cut a huge piece of pell on for the whole inside, it would not, um, it wouldn't bend very easily on this line. And now we're just going to cut around the total outside edges, all the way around, each piece. This is what the back looks like, and this is what the front looks like. And I like to cut close, like a couple of millimeters, just like you would for an applique. Um, that's just the way I do it. That's pretty close there. It's like two millimeter, one millimeter from the edge. I did use a triple tack down line so it shouldn't come unraveled or anything like that. In the back, I mean, it looks clean. It looks more like a finished edge. You wanna cut it close. 